So good morning, September the 1st, 2014. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is the first class in the second week of the semester. So let's get started. Welcome back and good morning. And I hope you succeeded in logging into this environment. Now, if you have succeeded in logging into the environment you should see something like this okay the subtitle is CISG 113 section 1 info security and privacy parenthesis 4 2014 and when you enter this particular environment you should see CISG 113 section 1 course information this site is managed by me, Dr. Bat, and that is your learning service. When you click on this link, you should be able to see the PDF version of our syllabus. And then some ideas to give. That is the view songs. I seem to have prayed you last week. Okay, but you can come back and listen to it often. And here is the GE handbook for the University of Macau in the academic year 2014 and 2015. And here's the academic calendar for the University of Macau. Okay, so click on it to see which days are holidays. And then these are the students, academic honesty or dishonesty code. Very important, and we were reminded by the university that we need to indicate this here if you read them. We also have the Student Disability Support Services, so if it happens that you do need some services, make sure you involve me, and then I can arrange something for you. So the basic tools to use is, I do have an English Chinese dictionary free online, and you can always use it to check on the Chinese meanings on some of the English work. And I have another free English dictionary, which is the Merriam web stuff, you can use it. And for those of you who need some time, let's just to polish your English, you can come to this site, it's free of charge. We will bring you up to speed from very elementary level to the common English level, okay? And then we do have the basic information to help get you informed. We have a semester attendance record. I'm going to demonstrate one time for you towards the end of today's class. And then there's the class announcement and news. Very important. I will keep you informed of the class information through this particular announcement, including the urgent message I sent at 9.58 today to inform you that I shall be late. Okay? And then we have a social forum for everyone in this class to use to express your idea. So if you have anything you want the whole class to know, and if it's something um, which you believe privacy is not an issue, come here and share with the whole class. You can even ask questions here. And then I do have the Dr. Beth TV Post hotline, which is for the whole semester. But let me tell you something about this hotline. This hotline is designed based on a forum concept. But in this forum, it is only you and me can use it. That means I have given each an individual of you a private channel to discuss with me anything you believe is important for you. So make the best use of this hotline in case you have any question you want to know, uh, but you do not want the whole class to be aware of, just give me post here. Everyone has a private channel, and no one in this class can see your message if you post it here, okay? So this is a private channel, this is a public channel, this is a class announcement here mostly one way. This is many to many, and this is one to one, okay, in terms of communications. To make the best use of things like this. All right, now we've gone through the first week of our class last week by helping you to understand something about this course. And in particular, we have used these particular course site, okay, uh, let me just go to the course site right here. We have used this particular course site. It's called Course Support Environment to help you get on speed into this course environment. Let me just make sure that I come here. Okay? So, right. Here we go. So, last week, we have given you information 
on this course, based on this cosine, it contains all the core information of this course. In this way, we start getting you familiar with this particular Moodle environment, which I mentioned last week. When you look at this Moodle environment, it is presented by a week-by-week -week format, okay? So we have 14 weeks in this semester, so you can see that after the housekeeping block, which is the first block in the Moodle environment, we come to week number one, which is last week's material. So when you come to last week's material, you can see that the core title is, it's week number one, from 2014 August the 25th to 2014 August the 30th. Now we do have a theme in each week. So this week we have two day class, which was respectively day number one and day number two. Okay? Day number one is August the 25th, day number two is August the 28th, and number one is Monday, number two is Thursday. And we get it here in E4 1051. Alright, so it's plain and clear. I do not indicate the time because you know the time. And then if you look at the course schedule, of our website that I just mentioned, we have the first bit as the introduction bit, and in the introduction bit, we should have got some ideas on what is meant by information security and what is meant by information privacy. But remember, we did not talk much about this in class last time. Instead, what I want you to do, and I hope you've already done it, is to go to the website that I introduced to you, go to the reading list, and look at the two questions there, and pick one information item out of the many there, just do some preliminary study on what is meant by information security and what is meant by information privacy. Now, the way to help you understand something like this based on the course learning design is called inquiry-based learning, IBL. Now, IBL is quite different from lecture-based learning. Lecture-based learning in the traditional sense or in the high school or in other classes, it's just the teacher who's supposed to be standing in front of the class like a sage on the stage and he's going to transmit this knowledge to all of you have. Now, we do a little bit of this, but most of the time we rely on the practice of IBL. IBL is a very much student-centered learning method. That is, before I'm going to tell you anything, I expect that you do some study on your own, and then that particular amount of time you spend in doing the study on your own should generate some set of questions on each one of you. And so when we come to class, I would like to listen to your sharing of your understanding of things like this by presenting your questions. And then we try to listen to questions from different students. And in the process of doing it, you're participating in class, and if you remember correctly, I tell you that if you participate in class, even though each one of you will be given only two minutes, that it shall be counted as an instance for class participations, and that is very useful for you to earn good grade towards the end of the semester, because it's being videotaped, and your participations will be recorded, and you can use that to justify earning your class participation score. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you something about IBL very soon. And so in each week's context of your Buddha environment, you should see something at the very beginning. Normally it started with the teacher's message of the week, and normally, as you know, that I did not give you the message last week until this week. And actually, this is the second week you should see that we have two teachers' message here, right? Teachers' message for week number one, teachers' message for week number two, anything urgent, all right, including my accent. All right, so when you look at that, you see that you need to read the teacher's message at the beginning of the week very um, carefully because it's the directions of your work in the week. And not only I would include a piece of music at the end, at the, at each week's working block to help you to soothe a little bit and then I'll give you some hints on how to study effectively and how to get the most effective of your learning and if you look at things like this you should see what they are okay what they are and then the readings of the week the videos of the week 
And then if you need help, just like a teacher guiding you to study something without doing anything at the very beginning, you can come to learn and practice for learning contract number one. If you remember, we are studying the semester with learning contract number one covering the first four weeks, okay? So we are now in the second week. So learning practice give you all the important information that you can learn based on a textbook. And the name of the textbook is already there. And then week number one, before you come to class, you should read something here. It, it tells you something about what you need to get yourself prepared, okay, before you come to class. And this tells you something about what we are going to do during the class. And this tells you something to do what you are supposed to do after the class and towards the end of the week. So basically, each week we have some basic summary information on what you're supposed to do in the Buddha environment. Your job is not to live it alone. You need to get yourself involved by getting informed and participate in those activities. And remember, today I'm going to ask you to give me the name and information of the learning partner, right? So how are you going to do it? Go to the environment here and use the information here which I'm going to explain it to you and type it in, all right? So day number one, I introduced you to the core website, I'm going to say the support website, which include information here, the course home, the calendar, the syllabus, the readings, the submissions, assessment. I hope you have already spent some time reading through this because you need to get yourself informed of what is required of you in this course and what our course policy is. And then day number two, I invite you to introduce yourself with one minute introductions, but indeed, you need to get yourself up today by going back to this particular day number two and do some review here. And what are you supposed to do? I'm sorry, I have not uploaded here. It took a longer time for me to convert my Sony versus the video to the uh, MPAC of WMV before I upload to YouTube, but I promise that you can see that by tomorrow. All right, so here we go. If you come to day number two, which we have not actually walked them through because we don't have that much time in class, we just have less than 90 minutes time. But at home, during your initial time, after class, your job is to make sure you go through this videos or PowerPoints Okay, to get some understanding on what is expected of you at the end of this day of your class. Okay, so at the end of each day, we have something like this, and most of these are YouTube videos. Alright, you can watch them again and again and again. You don't need to just, you're not just given one chance to watch them. And you watch them again and again and you use the material you watch and discuss with your learning partner. And that is why your learning partner must work hand in hand with you. And normally, I do not expect all of my students to read all of them, okay? This is not my expectation. But you select from this particular list given here what is expected of your interest and do some study on it. And normally, each one of these is just a couple of minutes of video, but it's going to generate a lot of thinking questions if you do it. So here we go. You know the pattern of each week. So each week we have two day meeting, and under each day you do some some resources to guide you through what you're supposed to know based on the syllabus and based on the course schedule. And your job is not to wait for me to tell you which one to watch or to read, in this class you need to navigate on your own by selecting the suitable item of interest and do some study there beside the readings and video at the very beginning. The readings is the most important because it's very much aligned with the topics of this course. And all of these are what we call the support material, examples good enough to help you understand the specific topic, okay? And do it in a way which you can always watch them again and read them again 
and gain and use it as the basis of the discussions. And then on each week, you do have some tools to track your learning. And what are the tools I provide you? That these other tools make available from the Moodle environment. Let's take a look at the first two. If you remember correctly, in each of the learning contracts throughout the semester, you are supposed to do some note taking, all right? After you finish reading something or after you have attended class. Now, once you got the notes, this is the notebook. We call it the online learning journal. It's a personal online learning journal. It's a journal only you can write on it. Not one of your fellow students can write on your journal. And each one of you has your personal learning journal, okay? You write there, you save your stuff there, I can read it. And you can always take it back. And in each week, I will give you a new personal online learning journal, okay? So you can keep track of your learnings there. The second thing is, we will give you, and actually this class is open enough that in each week, we're going to have a public online discussion forum for that week's material. So if you have something you want to discuss with your fellow students, you can use this public online discussion forum to express yourself if you have questions or ideas of your learning. And then you solicit responses from any one of your fellow students in the class. All right? So your idea will be complemented by the comments or good words or sometimes criticisms by your fellow students, but it's okay. You learn by negotiating meaning. Okay? There is no such thing as, oh, this is universal true. I know something and no one is going to argue with me. No. The idea of this design is for you to get yourself ready by putting down some notes on a specific topic of your choice and then you share your knowledge gain in the knowledge in the online discussion forum and your stu fellow students are going to jump in and to respond to you, all right? And then this is another hotline, Dr. Vance q and a hotline week number one. Again, this hotline is personal. If you have questions, you believe that I don't want to let my fellow student know that I ask such a question, it might be silly or it might be funny or it might be important. So use this hotline to ask a question. If you have a question belonging to that with material, use that with online, okay? That is very important. I can handle that within hours, okay? And not when I answer students' questions during the night, and when I look at today's and, and every week's work. And after last week, I have a questionnaire for you to see some feedback on your feelings or experience of last week's experience. So you, you come to this, questionnaire. Oh, this is supposed to be your homework tonight, okay? You must do it before tomorrow, all right? You must do it before tomorrow. That means before 11.55 today, all right? If you go beyond 11.55, the, the time game will be closed and your ID will not be captured. So do it before the end of 11.45 tonight. Come to this link and complete the questionnaire, it's not going to be complicated, all right? So, and again, this is the teacher's message for this week. So, at the very beginning, at the very bottom, it's very convenient. So, what is the message for this past week? So, if you look at the teacher's message for the first week, if you click on this, you will be brought to this page, okay? And in this particular page, you see that I have a teacher's message, just write your letter and at the beginning of each week. And I just want you to be aware that this is a general education course. And there's some differences between a general education course and a disciplinary course. And I mentioned a little bit of those differences last week. The major differences is we do not use a lot of lecture-based teaching or learning. We use a lot of the student center way of learning because we want you to learn how to fish. Brad Norris give you a fish to hit. Alright? So you need to understand the morale behind general education at the university of Macau. 
you've written some of those informations, and then you need to understand some of the basis between gender educations and the disciplinary educations, and some of the differences between comfort based versus the ability based educations, deep versus surface way to learn transmissions way of teaching and the constructions way of teaching. The teacher center approach, which is called taught to learn. I was taught to learn something. Or student center, I learned to learn something. Okay, even though I do not have a physical teacher. And then the individual mode of learning versus the group mode of learning. You know that in this class, we do a lot of pair-based learning, team-based learning, and task force-based learning, which is very important in today's world. And then I said, I need your help, I need your trust that this is something good for you, and you need to try and experience it, and you can express your view all the time to me and also with your fellow students. The communication channels in this class is always open. And then, I want you, having to work the end of the message, to do a simple comparisons between your past approach of learning, which is mostly on this side, to the inquiry approach of learning, which is on this side, which is the college way to learn. This is mostly the secondary way to learn. Now try to see how many of those individual elements that you have already experienced, and put some thoughts into it. And then I also invite you to understand the differences between the responsibility between you as a student participating in this class and me as your teacher helping you to learn. We need to share responsibility. And you must know the responsibility is the bottom line requirement in this class. And you have to be held and comfortable for your work. So that is the teacher's message. And then if you come back to this, all right, we are in week number two. So week number two, which starts on August the 31st and on September the 6th, we have day number three and day number four again in this room. But this week, we start the common module. We call it Introductions to IT and Knowledge Society. We talk a little bit more about this one. IT and Knowledge Society last week. But what exactly is this? Again, we continue the AIBL method, inquiry based learning method. That is, you need to ask questions. You just, don't just fill your head with everything that comes to you. You ask an appropriate question. Normally, we call this essential question. And then, from the essential question, we start to explore. All right? We don't just memorize. And so I give you another theme's music, because all things bright and beautiful. And then the five most essential soft skills that you need to know. Now, all of you, most of you, if you're a first year student, you live in the residential college. Your college master must have informed you of the importance of living in a residential college. As the conference say, your hard knowledge, the disciplinary knowledge, with a soft skill you're going to earn through living and learning. So, what are the essential soft skills? Come here and take a look. These soft skills that helped you through the college education. And again, we have the reading for week number two and some videos for week number two. We invite you to come back and learn practice for this week. And then we have the ball class during class, after class, and with exercise. Now, these you do not need to hand in, but you need to be participating in. And so, a day number three, which is today, we're supposed to learn something about information security. So, we come back to the idea of security awareness, and we want to introduce to the, some of the best practice of 21st century learning, and then we give you the idea of IBL, okay, from a student's point of view, and the examples of IBL approach at the university. And then we're going to have the class video for today. All right. So, having said that, all right. Now, here we go. We are not in day number four yet. I would like each one of you, since this is already week number two, 
you must name your learning partner, okay, mostly today, if not today, before this Wednesday. Use this Dr. Bet's Q&A hotline here for week number two, because we are now in week number two. Come here and type in some information on your learning partner. Now, what information should you type in, all right? So I've already given you a format here. Let's take a look at the teacher's message for week number two. In the teacher's message for week number two, towards the end of the message, you see there is a box here, okay? Copy and paste this box, okay, into Dr. Bet's question and answer hotline for week number two, and fill in your information here, your student ID, your SOT name, your year, your major of study, your email address, and your contact phone number. And fill in your public information on the second row. Just copy and paste during the information. Type that into your Dr. Vets Q&A hotline, okay? Each one of you need to do it, all right? Copy and paste this box into the Dr. Vets Q&A hotline. All right, this is this one here. All right, if I were you, I just simply say copy and dip and paste this. Do this, copy, and go to Dr. Vets Hotline here, which is Dr. Vets Hotline, okay? And what do you do? I've already got some persons who did it already. Very good. To, can I add a new discussion topic? And that is the topic of my learning partner. <coughs> Did you see that? Oh, sorry. Let me make sure you see that. So after you type this, you paste, you paste it here. Okay? And you type your information here. And your partner's information here. Towards the end, you just need to pose to the phone. So when you post to the forum, you can see that an extra entries will be there, right? At the very top, now you have this entry. I can see all of this, all right, because I'm a teacher. But be sure that this person cannot see that when you lock into that, all right? Because I'm a super user. I can see all of this. And when you type something in, you cannot see my cannot see that. Alright? Did you see that? I'm not cheating you. This is your private channel. Alright? So for me as a teacher I can see all of them. Okay? Alright? So now I've already almost used up by four fifteen minutes not for the first one I use it to handle my accident. So I came here today at 10.15, and then I used my first 15 minutes, the second 15 minutes, but now I'm down to my first 15 minutes. So, let me give you a trick to ask some questions and play you some music. Sound. Today there's something wrong with the sound system.
Okay. I hope you love this John Ruffles music. Now I'm going to give you five more minutes to consider what I said in the first 45 minutes. And if you have any questions, spend the next 15 minutes asking. Or you can exchange with your fellow students now. I let you lose because you need to talk with your fellow students to make sure you understand what I said. If you anything you feel confused, you can ask me directly or you can talk to your partner first. Alright? In the meantime, I'm going to show you how I'm going to take attendance. Alright? So when your name gets being called, as you can see on the screen, uh, please make sure you raise your hand. So, Kalia, Kalia, are you here? Thank you very much. I'm sorry because I'm sitting down here. And G, is it G? G, are you here? The second one? Not here? All right. So, Claudia. Are you here, Claudia? All right. Not here. Lena? Thank you. Ada? Ada? Thank you. Uh, Andy? Thank you. Ryan? Thank you. Jenny? Thank you. Jackie? Thank you. And then, Hoy? Hoy Ping? Hoy Ping, thank you. And then Pan C. Hope. Thank you. Uh, learn Man Hope. Man Hope. Are you here? No, not yet. So Beatrix. Thank you. Uh, C. Man. Are you here? C. Man. Not here. Okay. Uh, Gao Yu. Are you here? Thank you. I need to stand up sometime. Put it over here. Angela. Thank you. And then Erika, thank you. Why uh, Why Yan? Are you here? Why Yan? Not there? Okay. Why Yan is here, right? Okay. All right. Ruby, thank you. And C, thank you. And then Alice, Elisa, thank you. Uh, Loka, thank you. Uh, Stephen, thank you. Uh, Terence, thank you. Winnie, thank you. So, Wai Wai Sing, thank you. Uh, Gaki, thank you. Winnie again, thank you. Gillian, thank you. Brent, thank you. Gloria, thank you. So Michelle, can see here? Okay, not here. Annie, thank you. And White Lum, thank you. And uh, Light Ting, 
Thank you. Gao K. Thank you. Uh, and then Zhang Zhong. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, and then Ken Chan Kwan. All right. Chan Kwan. Thank you. Gao Feng. Kelvin. Thank you. Baka. Thank you. Hanson. Thank you. And then Jessica. Thank you. Jikin. Thank you. Sanju. Wow, you have the same thing as my buddy. Iris. Thank you. Okay. Ga. Ga Ho. Are you here? Not here. All right. So, anyone whose name is not Paul? Any person whose name is not Paul? All right. So, we got the attendance call for three minutes in about five minutes. Now, do you have any questions? Could I give you some time to walk around to make sure you have a chance to ask questions from your fellow students? You want to do it? Okay, 10 minutes, just walk around, all right? Just ask questions. And you can also come to me to ask questions. I, I, I do not want to fix you on your chair, all right? So it's not going to work like this. Okay, uh, someone asked, do we need to buy the book? Now, the book is already in the library textbook section. If you want to read the book, you can photocopy the necessary chapters. All right? You do not need to buy the whole book because the, the website is the most important. It's more than the book, okay? Wow, it's $600. All right? So, and then the textbooks. It's useful to say that you want to learn something. You go to the learn and practice section. Okay? The learn and practice section is actually designed based on the textbook here. Okay? This is designed based on this textbook. Alright? So almost of the best thing is already there. Alright? It's just really up to you. Okay, any other questions? Yes. No? Alright. Do you remember when it's the first submission? at the end of the fourth week, all right? Now is the second week, so you need to plan ahead. Don't do things in the very last minute, all right? There's not many, but you need to do it together with your learning partner, all right? Selecting topic to read, writing some journals, getting involved with the discussion forum. Now, remember, after you've given me the learning partner information today, I'm going to set up an extra discussion forum called the Pair Discussion Forum, which you can use from this week to the end of the learning contract number one. The Pair Discussion Forum is for the two of you. No other students can jump in to your Pair Discussion Forum to facilitate your discussion. Okay? You must type in something. So do not delay by naming your learning partner because the sooner you got your learning partner, the earlier and you can start working out the discussion details. Alright? And then towards the end you can select things to improve in your first learning contracts artifacts. Alright. So if you like why I'm giving you time to talk with your learning partner, you're free to do that. I give you another piece of music for John Rock.
students ask me the questions. What should we write in the journal? Not taking. Is there any work limit? There is no work limit in one piece of journal which is based on one specific topic. But normally for a specific topic, according to my experience, two to three A4 pages will be good enough. Okay? And what should we write in the journal? The answer to this question is already in the teacher's message of today, that means this week and last week. But definitely, I shall come to visit this topic on Thursday. Now, for me to tell you, there is a specific way for us to do IBL. Now, the theme of the first learning contract is IBL, inquiry-based learning. Now, to do inquiry-based learning, the most important thing is to come up with questions, okay? Now, how do we come up with questions? Do we come up with questions out of nothing? No, we don't do it that way. We start out by pinpointing a topic of interest. That's why we need to start out with a question. Every week, when you come to the reading list, the number of specific questions. And under each specific question, the number of information items that you choose. Normally, one information item is good enough for you to write to a journal. But practically, most of the students who start out by inquiring one item normally go to study two more items. Okay, this is the practice. You will see that on your own, all right? And then we start out by a very intuitive process of observation. Observation means we look around, we just see what comes into our mind. When we say we look around, when we do the reading of that piece, we look around and we see what interests it. And we call this observation. We try to keep track of the observable things of the reading. And we take down some notes about those observable things. Okay? And then after the observation, which is normally a data collection stage, we pick, we pick, we pick. We do not put a lot of thinking in what we pick, we just pick things up. If you want to know what is meant by observation, bring your body to a supermarket with no specific thing you want to buy. But when you walk out of the supermarket, normally you buy something. Okay? Those things attract your attention and you can experience them. Now, the second stage of the inquiry-based learning after observation is called interpretations. Interpretation means to ask specific questions. What does it mean by putting together this set of data? What does it mean by understanding this specific concept? What does this particular concept give me so that I could relate to answering the questions at the very beginning? You do a lot of questioning in the process of interpretation. And you have pockets of answers. But normally, those pockets of answers are not well connected. So we move on to the stage of applications. A, asking the question, how should I best use the data, which I've already labeled them with a specific question. And you try and put them together again by forming small stories of knowledge. Like it's important. So when you try to tell small stories of what you did and what you have attached to a specific bunch of data, you're trying to make sense of what you have spent time doing. If you want to know something about this, read a newspaper. You have a lot of stories in a newspaper. And then you try to read the editorial. And you try to relate how the story is presented in the newspaper related to the editorial. Of the newspaper, and you can you can find some interesting clues about the connections. Now, O observation, I interpretations, and A application. It's a very simple but very sophisticated process of learning. It helps us to think practically. It helps us to make sense of a lot of things. But it's not easy to practice. To perfect it, we have to practice practice, and then we can gain the idea of learning. All right? If you have never gone through this, but just memorize a bunch of things like the secondary school, 
and reproducing a bunch of things in your examination. Years after years, and you just gone through a lot of things like that. In Chinese, we say, just like a sound game. It seems to pull a lot, but when it's lifted up, all the things leaks. OIA is one way to catch the sound game in such a way that it can contain them. All right? So how do you write a journal? Practice the skills of OIA. And we are going to elaborate more on this one first. All right, time is up. You can go to your next class. I'll see you later, all right? So that's it for today, CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. And today it's September the 1st, 2014. Until this first day, stay in tune.